Hi everyone, welcome to the training session of Inspire for Casting. For today's training, our course learning path of Inspire for Casting analysis goes from a targeted topic to a specific direction, where we will talk about casting manufacturing, simulation setup, and analysis. Inspire Cast is a part of an Inspire platform that shares a similar type of user interface and accessibility features like sketching and geometry creation. There are some other tools like Inspire Cast under the umbrella of manufacturing solutions like Inspire Mold Inspire Form, Inspire Extrusion, Inspire Print 3D, etc. Then there is Inspire for motion analysis, structure analysis, optimization, as well as design editing tools. But as we are going to talk about Inspire for casting today, we'll begin with the segment of getting started with the tool itself. In this Inspire casting training session, we will talk about how to set up a model, how to import geometry, how a user can run a simulation, and how a user can optimize results based on simulation predictions. The training package you have already received has different folders. It contains student files, student exercises, PDF presentations, etc. Training objectives of Inspire for casting are to learn how to use Inspire Cast to perform the mold filling simulation and evaluate design concepts. The objective also involves understanding some of the predictions for major casting defects in the industry. This means we will learn how to predict defects as well as how to avoid those typical defects and obtain a better casting quality. This training for Inspire Cast is divided into two days sessions. Session 1 is related to getting started Inspire Cast. It includes an introduction to casting manufacturing briefly. The purpose behind teaching the introduction of casting processes in brief is that anyone new to the casting realm can learn the process, and they can get an understanding of what simulation is and what is casting process. Then we'll talk about Inspire Cast getting started as a tool itself. We'll see how we can quickly set up and submit an analysis, and then we'll investigate some of the geometry creation capabilities. In session 2, we will talk about various casting process components. We'll also discuss additional components such as high-pressure die casting, gravity casting, low-pressure die casting, gravity tilt pouring, and gravity investment casting. Let us move forward with session 1 now. This session is mainly about discussing the introduction of casting processes, geometry capabilities, running a quick simulation, analyzing results, understanding the behavior of the flow, and understanding some of the results like porosity defects. We will also see some of the flow patterns, and how they can be changed based on the selection of gate location. The version of Inspire Cast that we are going to use today will be 2022.1. You can open Inspire Cast on your end so that we can go through the user interface and try to do some exercises. You can follow as well if you wish to do so. If you have an older version, that's fine. However, some of the features you might not be able to see which were added or upgraded in the latest version. But you can upgrade it to the latest version to access newly added features. Alright, let's move to the casting processes. This document is a guide for designers who are not familiar with casting manufacturing, or who are just trying to understand the process as well as the simulation methodology. When you want to decide what kind of casting process you need to use, a decision can be made based on four major criteria. That would be geometry, material, surface finish, and cost. Whether you're designing a complex or a simple geometry, tolerance and thickness can are the factor useful to define the appropriate process. So if you want a geometry with a thick wall, then gravity sand casting, permanent gravity casting or low pressure casting methods are more suitable for your work. If you are going with a thin wall geometry, then investment casting or high pressure casting is the one that you should go with. Similar is the case with tolerance. If you are looking for good to excellent tolerance, then you can decide on the specific type of casting process. When considering the materials, permanent molds are commonly made from steel. Ferrous materials must be cast in the sand molds. For the non-ferrous materials, you can choose from several different casting processes. You can see in the table that the metals like iron, steel, aluminum, copper, magnesium, zinc, and titanium are majorly used for production in the industries. 
All these major five casting processes gravity sand casting, low pressure casting, high pressure casting, investment casting, gravity tilt, or gravity permanent are widely used. In the table, you can see the highlighted boxes that show the type of materials being used for a particular casting process by the industries. Similar to tolerances, if you're looking for a high surface finish or low quality surface, then you have to decide between sand casting or investment casting, or high pressure casting. Also, based on the cost whether you are manufacturing in a bulk, if it's mass production, or if it's production based on the requirement, you can decide what is more convenient in terms of cost. Whether you go with sand casting or with high pressure die casting, you can decide based on these factors. Now let us understand why simulation is important. Earlier, about 30 years ago, people used to do the trial and error method. They would manufacture the part, understand the defect, and then they try to modify the original design. Then they try to manufacture it again, which is a waste of cost and time as well. To avoid that kind of issue we are trying to use technology where you can simulate this process beforehand and perform the analysis which will give you some predictions based on the simulation. InspireCast can simulate the various casting processes such as gravity sand, investment casting, gravity permanent mold, low pressure die casting, high pressure die casting, and gravity tilt pour. These are the slides explaining each casting process briefly. You can go through these slides separately later to learn about them on a basic scale. Gravity casting is divided into two segments, one when sand is being used and the other for mold is being used. And then after that, the process of gravity sand casting is mentioned in steps 1 to 4. Here it is shown how the bottom half and top half of the mold are being prepared. And once the cavity is created with the combination of the top and bottom half, then the part will be manufactured by pouring molten metal. Moving on further to casting results, one of the most common problems affecting the functionality of your component is porosity. It's not possible to remove porosity 100%. However, you can reduce it to a certain extent by modifying the process parameters or modifying the design, or by trying out some new combination of materials. The existence of porosity defects will affect some of the aesthetics of the part. It can also cause a quality failure like mechanical stress that occurs in some of the locations. That will cause the part to get failed during the operation, and this must be avoided. That's why we must think about how to avoid such porosity issues. Generally, the porosity defect is divided into two cases. One is gas porosity that occurs during filling, and another one is shrinkage porosity that occurs during solidification. The gas porosity is where gases get trapped and cannot leave the cavity during the filling stage. The shrinkage porosity is where your cavity is filled with molten metal and then it solidifies and shrinks during the cooling stage. The reason for the shrinkage is because of the possibility that there is no source to provide the additional material, then it will create a void inside that causes shrinkage porosity. Here is one criterion that represents the microporosity at a microscopic level and it's nothing but the ratio of thermal gradient and cooling rate. Some of the materials that are tested like copper, steel, cast iron, and aluminum were have threshold values for the microporosity of the Nyama. So if you're running this simulation with these materials, you can put the values in the legend. For example, for aluminum, it should be 0 to 0 0.3. Now if you move your slider from top to bottom, you can change visually and see which location has the microporosity present there. 